late last time. Um, when I was doing slash root bin bash, it came out with a no such file or directory. That's because when I was using it, I actually was going by um, the little graph I was showing, and I accidentally put a capital B. Now, one thing to notice about Linux, it is case sensitive. So saying bin with a capital is a lot different than saying bin with a lowercase. So, but this time if I do bin slash bash, it'll take me back to the regular prompt. And that's because bin or this bash program is the same thing we're doing now. Um, so it's just going to open up a new or this new line here. And that's it. Um, that was a little mistake that I made. I didn't catch on time. But good thing we kind of made it because now we at least see. Um, or I can show you a little bit about the case sensitiveness that comes with um, the Linux terminal. So, one thing I'll show you in this video is going to be how to manage files. Um, one thing to work with is going to be, we've already learned how to go through directories, how to select files. You have to be in the same room as the file, or you have to explicitly say the exact location of that room, um, either by the full directory like we did here, bin bash, or by going cd and changing directory into bin and then calling bash from the same directory. So it's all about where you are and your um, respective area. Um, so again, I can't call a program in a different folder because I'm not actually in it. And one thing to note as well, when you're using the regular home or regular file manager, it's the same idea. You can double click on any of these because they're in your current room or directory. Uh, however, you can't click on anything else unless you first change your respective directory. So if I'm in Chris, I can't go to um, Windows 7 folder that's over here, the Win 7, but I can once I actually switch to it. So the same exact idea applies in the terminal. You have to be there in order to um, actually call that file or folder, or in the terminal you can actually explicitly put in the whole directory to call it without actually being in the directory. Alright, so let's go ahead and start some file management. Um, one thing to know is how to create a file. There is one explicit way to do it, and that will be the touch command. Touch is two things. Touch can create a new file if it doesn't exist, or it can then update a already existing file's um, date of access. So if you haven't used the file for a week or so, it'll update it to this exact moment. Or if it doesn't exist, like now, we're going to go ahead and make one. And I'll show you a little bit about it. Let me see if I can get the amount of seconds available. Um, so we created this at 10.20.01. And probably by now, it's a little later. So I'm going to go ahead and touch it again. It's not going to do anything other than update it. Now it's 18. So we see that touch updates the t data event access um, or modification. Um, and that's not too much to do. And also touch creates a new file if it doesn't exist already. And this file by default is a text file. However, it can be any file that you want it to be. Um, it has to start off as a blank file. But as you, let's say, uh, want to create an image file, you can simply rename this to .jpg. And you can actually run that as an image if indeed it is an image. If not, it's just going to open with um, not correct format. So that's how to kind of play around and how to make a file. Now, if we want to move the file or even copy it, I'm going to go ahead and use the command cp to copy. And I'll do new file. And I want to press space again. And now the second command I'm going to put in is going to be the renaming of that file. I'm going to call it old file. So if I copy new file to old file, all it is is going to copy the exact same contents of new file to old file. Right now I have nothing inside. Let's go ahead and put something and control S to save. And now I have SDF. Now this is the old file that we had when it was blank. Or the new file when we had when it was blank. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. And now we see that it keeps doing it on top of each other. But now ASDF is the exact same file as you can see up here. <clears throat> That's the simple copy. That's the simple right click, copy, and then right click, paste. However, that is in terminal format. Um, another thing you can do is move files around with the MV command. 
So MV new file, oop, view file, new file, and we're gonna go ahead and rename it uh, new file original. I don't know, just making some random stuff. So it's gonna take new file and move it. However, we didn't move it anywhere different. We actually renamed it. That's another thing that MV can do. It can either move the file to another directory or you can rename it to something different. And that's kind of how renaming works in Linux and any other operating system. It moves it from one file to another file name. Um, if we want to actually move it, let's go ahead and make a directory. And that's going to be mkdir, make dir. And we're going to make new dir. I'm going to go ahead, stop putting it on top of each other. I'm going to go ahead and mv remove new file original. And I can stop here actually press the tab button to finish it off for me and I can move that to the new dir slash to the depict that that is a directory and then whatever file name so it's moving it and now it's gonna be right in here and it's gonna have that new name and again this is both the move and the rename feature and you can literally just rename it or move it with the same exact file name or you can make a new one as I did here now, let's go ahead, we made a bunch of files, let's go ahead and remove them. Um, one thing to know is going to be the remove command, which is rm. So I'm going to remove old file. It's old, I don't need it. Let's remove it. Cool. Um, let's say I'm done with new dir, or new directory. I'm going to remove it as well. But, you'll see that it's prompting that it is a directory, and it didn't actually remove it. This is a precaution in many cases because sometimes a file name may be the exact same name as a directory and you want to remove the file name or the file um, but you're pointing to the directory accidentally and it's a lot a lot more risky to remove a whole directory since it may contain a lot of files compared to just one single file so in order to remove that we need to append the minus sign r for recursive which simply says that there are other files inside the directory or even if there aren't any it's 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 basically pointing to a directory like substance and new dir one thing to know also if I press tab right now it's gonna show me that there are two different file names with that start off with new now it doesn't know which one to pick because there are two and it gives you a list of what's available so you can kinda complete it from there if I put new f it's going to know that it's going to be new file 2 because that's the only file that starts like that. If I do new D, and that's going to do new dir because it's the only file with that string, that N, E, W, and D. There's nothing else in that layer. However, if there's another new dir or new dir 2, it's going to prompt for those two. So I'm going to go ahead and remove new dir. And to top it off, I'm going to go ahead and remove new file 2. That's a little bit of how to manage them, how to work with the files. Um, it's very easy, just gotta get used to the commands. It's something in memory, really. Um, nothing else that's too hard. Um, if we make, again, a new file, well, let's go ahead and make it a different way. We're gonna use a file editor from the terminal called Pico that I used earlier. I'm gonna call it new file and press enter. Now it's gonna create a file and we can actually edit it directly. And this is only gonna be for text files. So I'm going to put the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And I'm going to go ahead and do control X. Um, we can see all the commands available down here. This little up arrow just means control. And just the X is the shortcut key. So control X to exit basically. And before we exit, do we want to make changes? Yes, we do. Press the Y button. And we can either rename it to another file or we can just keep it the same. And there it is, the quick brown fox jumped over a lazy dog, or the lazy dog. So, we can either open it up in this area, or if we just want to quickly see what's inside, we can do cat, and new file. And this will show us exactly what's in it, straight in the terminal. Now, if we have a file that has multiple lines, I'm gonna make 20. Let's make it 21. And I save that file. Oh, there's no file name. Let's do that again. Control X, 
Yes, and then we have to make a file name. And there it is, long file, and it has the numbers 1 through 21. So if we want to see it, we can do cat long file. And there's the contents of that file right there. If if it's a log file, and let's say we just want to see the first 10 um, entries, we it's usually it's it's kind of pointless in many cases. However, if you're using let's say um, a f you're trying to look at a file that has it's always updating by date or time, and you just want to see the last 10 things that happened to it. We can do head long file, and it's going to show us the top 10 uh, lines, or we can do tail long file and it's going to show us the last 10 things um, and you see we don't have 11 or, or 11 because it's in the middle but we can just do cat to find the whole thing if we wanted to but it's to show us the last four or last 10 and the first 10 by tail and head that's one way to kind of check out files if you want to look at them and see uh, what's the contents are inside um, one thing I'll also show you is going to be um, a few shortcuts so let's say right now we are in the desktop directory and ls we see those two files one thing we can also do in respect for being in a desktop directory we can see what's behind us or what's in the previous room we can do ls either home chris because that's the last one before us or we can do ls dot dot which will show us the previous working directory and it's gonna seem it's gonna show the exact same stuff because it is the exact same area um, that's one shortcut so if you're in any area Let's go. I can even use this um, dot dot to say I want to go back one. CD dot dot and ls, we're back here. Now, if I do ls dot dot again, it's going to show us even the previous directory, which is all the usernames. We can also use um, CD. Let's say let's go to root, and now we're in the root directory. We can use CD dot dot to go straight to the home directory. Or if we are on a different directory somewhere let's say in the bin we can do ls dot dot or let's see uh... Oh, actually messed up i meant to say the squiggly so if we do ls squiggly we're gonna see exactly what's in our home folder now what is the squiggly it's actually gonna be a shortcut for home chris so no matter where we are what we're doing the squiggly is always going to denounce home Chris, the current user being used. And depending on what user you are, you're going to have different uh, outcomes. So if you're logged in as Chris, you're only going to be able to see the Chris folder. Um, and we can easily use this if we want to copy a file from the directory. And we know desktop is inside my home folder. And then new file. And if we want to move it to, let's say, uh, root we can do that however one thing to know anything below your home directory including the Chris or the username area is gonna require root privileges and we'll go ahead and talk about root privileges in the future it's basically administrative account um, but just like roots in a directory um, basically having all access to all the files or looking at all the files in the slash directory root permission is having the ability to edit any file on your system and we'll go ahead and go through that a bit and one last shortcut is going to be the little star, the asterisk. I think that's what it's called. Um, so let's say if we go to our desktop right now, and we do list directory, we know we have two files, long file and new file. We can either delete them both individually by putting their name in, or we can easily just do the asterisk. And this, this is the wild card that means everything in the directory and boom they're gone so no matter how many files we have on this desktop it's going to basically remove everything and it's good and bad good to know because I mean, if you want to clear something out really easily you can use that bad to know because not bad to know but good to know because some people like to play games with you and they say oh run this command um, in your computer if you're using Linux this is as you can see the root directory and what do we have in the root directory it's basically every single file in the computer and if we remove everything in there, and because there are directories, it's going to be like this, it's going to break our system. Um, it won't do anything by itself like this because the root directory does require administrative privileges and I haven't given it. Uh, but if you see a command like sudo rmr slash asterisk, you really don't want to run that. 
it's going to erase just about everything on your computer. Um, just a little awareness. Um, it's good to know so you don't, you know, get uh, screwed over by somebody on the internet. Um, but that's just about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue to the next video. Hope this kind of give you a little idea on managing files.